Good morning, sunshine. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, indeed. It is Friday, everybody. And it's a blessed day if you are viewing my video today. It's a beautiful day for encouragement. Yes, indeed. Who don't need a little pick-me-up in the morning? Not just coffee, not just food, not a cup of tea, not just a hug, not just a kiss, but a pick-me-up with words, 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 words. Oh, how important it is that we get our encouragement every single day. And you have to find encouragement in any way possible to keep yourself fueled up and to keep yourself motivated. And so here I am to give you your morning dose of encouragement. And today I want to speak to you all this morning about speaking life over death. We do not want the power of the tongue, I should say, in Proverbs 18. is so strong that we do not want to use your tongue to speak death. You want to speak life. When you think about what it means, when you think of the word death in itself, um, it's scary, right? Because you know that when we die, anything that, that gives off death when you're, you're, when you're dying, you're not going to be here anymore. Death means just as that. You're gone. It's gone. It's, it's, it's not living anymore. There's no life anymore. Not, there's no existence anymore. It's just completely dead. And so when we speak, use our tongue to speak things, we have to be careful what we're saying. We cannot just roll off the tongue with negative things. And this is why I always say, speak life over yourself. Even in my prayer group, I say it all the time. Speak life over yourself. When somebody is feeling so sad and despondent, yes, you want somebody to pray for you. Hands down, you have prayer warriors and prayer intercessors that will pray for you. But it's nothing like speaking life over yourself. God wants to hear it come from you. He wants to hear your voice, especially when you're not a person that do not spend time with him. He wants to hear it come out your mouth that you need him that you need healing. He already knows what you need. Yes, indeed he does, but he wants to hear it from you. It's all right. It's like a parent. We know what our kids need and when they need it. Well, sometimes we want them to come to us and not be afraid and say what they need to say. You have to definitely watch what you say and what you put into the atmosphere because it does come to fruition. And it's so, so weird how that happens. But your energy, the energy that you create vibing off of your emotions is how your day is going to look. It's how your day is going to come out. If you wake up feeling all sad, down, and despondent, then this is what the outcome is going to be of your day. If you wake up being negative or you go through your whole day being negative, speaking negative, gossiping, always talking bad about somebody, always wishing bad on somebody, always being judgmental towards somebody, then this is what your day is going to look like. This is what your life is. And so you want to speak life over yourself all the time. Speaking life means to say, congratulate yourself, appreciate yourself, love on yourself, being there for yourself, encouraging yourself, saying, I am loved. Remember the self-check and the mirror. Look in the mirror each day and speak over yourself, speak over your life. And then you can pray for others. Thank God. Speak over your life. Bless your family and then pray. Begin to pray. All of this, you're still praying, but then get into whoever else you want to bless. But you got to get you all together. You got to fix you, your inner being. It's easy for us to get up, throw some lip gloss on, lie eye line and brighten up ourselves and look good. But at the end of the day, how are we feeling on the inside? How are you feeling on the inside? It's, 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 it's a serious question. You know, you wake up every day and, and, and take life for granted. You wake up every day and you're not thinking about yourself. You just wake up with the intent that, oh, I'm up today. Um, it's another day and I'm going to get dressed and I have to go to work and I have to do this and I have to do that. You have all these things on your list that you have to do, but did you do a self check to say, how are you feeling? How's your heart today? 
How's your mindset today? Are you feeling well enough to even go out there and be around people in the street? Are you going to go out there and lash out on people because you can't control your emotions? Emotions is such a big thing. And I honestly, up until um, that two weeks ago, where I wasn't even paying attention to that word at all, it's, it's now that I'm really seeing it, that emotions is everything. And trust me, with the things that women go through, with perimenopausal and you, you, everything being one, you don't have estrogen, you, you got testosterone and all those other things going on. With all of the things that we go through, it creates a negative impact on our emotions. But because I'm Bible-based and walking in God's light, I am able to withstand it. And sometimes I can't, though. It is overwhelming. It is draining. But I do not allow it to cause me to be mean and evil. I have to really be careful when I'm going through these emotions, all of these changes, not to say something to hurt somebody. Because again, you're on an emotional roller coaster. You're sensitive. When we're sensitive, our guards go up and we're ready to fight now. You don't want nobody to say nothing slick to you, nothing wrong to you, because now you're going to snap. You're going to clap back. And that's not what I want to do. So you have to know how to tread lightly with your emotions. How do we do this? We build up ourselves. We encourage ourselves. We definitely have to encourage ourselves. You know, you, you can't allow the enemy to trick you into doing his work because trust and believe he will. He definitely will. And um, we, we get swallowed up in his lies. We do. We really get swallowed up in his lies. And so I had to, my laptop is so, so I did this update on this laptop and I regret doing it because I don't know, it, it made it worse. Um, however, I had to look up Proverbs 18 and 21 so that you can hear me say what it is with the tongue and the power of speaking life over death. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Scriptures declares that life and death are in the power of the tongues. What we speak, we shall have. Therefore, watch the words you speak to self or others. Again, it's in God's word. Watch what you speak to yourself and others. You got to be careful. Even in our thoughts, it goes as deep in your thought. Because what's going to roll off the tongue, it starts in your mind. You start to think it. And so everything connects and it works together. Remember I talked to you before about how uniquely made we are, how our the smallest nerve cell in the body, the smallest organ, how big of a role that it plays on the inside. Well, the brain connects, our thoughts connects. And when you're thinking and what you're thinking is what you're going to speak. And so you have to be careful, so to speak, positive things, not negative things. And so when you feel like you are in a rut and you don't know what to say to somebody or what to even speak over yourself, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you. And the Holy Spirit is God and God lives within you. So he's already in place. You just have to tap into that power within and get to talking. We talk and we tear people down all the time. We run our mouths all the time about things that is not beneficial. It's not helping you and it's not helping another person. But we don't know how to open our mouths when it's time to open our mouths and talk to your father. And so he's waiting for you. And God can move mountains out of our way like this. He can make every cloud, every fog that's outside disappear like this. Just like he holds the power to kill you, to just take you out, end your life like this. Everything can have it happen in a blink of an eye. And we know how many times we blink our eye within a day, within a second. How many times you blink your eye? Never thought about that, have you? Well, yes, indeed. That's just how fast he can work in our lives and change things in our lives. Our God is so powerful and so merciful. Look at all these things that he did in the Bible. For all of the other people in the Bible, God can part a Red Sea. God saved Daniel while he was in the lion's den. God healed so many people. He healed the blind. He raised people from the dead. This is how strong our God is. He healed a woman that was bleeding continuously, 
No doctor can help her. No pill was able to solve her situation. She just was bleeding, bleeding, bleeding uncontrollably. God healed her. He blessed the fisherman who was out there fishing on the boat for food. And he could not get not one fish. All of a sudden, here's all the sea full of fish. If God did it for them, and this is not just a story. This is not a lullaby. This is real talk in the holy word of God. This is real talk in God's word. It's in his word. And his word is our instruction manual. We just don't open it. Why? We have it all in these pretty cases like mine. However, I pulled mine out. We get it all fashionably engraved or you receive it as a gift and we don't open it. Why? Because of these thin pages and these fine wordings. But we don't have an excuse today because you can download a Bible and have it in your phone at your beck and call. You can zoom in and see the words. You can put it in different translations for yourself so it'll break it down in terms of how we speak today and where you can understand it better. We have no excuse that why we cannot use this instruction manual to get through our life and to get through our day, to lift us up. The book of Psalms, phenomenal pick me up. I always, always gravitated to the book of Psalms. And maybe it's because my mom, the first scripture that my mother taught me to recite and to memorize was Psalms 23. So once I started to read Psalms, it was soothing to me all the time that I went through something, that I endured something. That was my go-to all the time. You have to start from somewhere. And so that's where I started. So if I can tap into the word, tap into the powers that, is, that be, which is my God, you can too. You don't have to walk around feeling like you're alone, speaking that you're alone. And trust me, you see me sitting here today doing this, every day ain't always good for me. But I wake up with the intent that I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the Father, what should I say to you all today? How should I act? I'm going to ask him to check me and make sure I'm good before I even get on here. Because there's certain times I just won't get on. Certain times I need to be spiritually um, encouraged. My Some people are tapping, texting me in the morning from 5 a.m. Encouraging me. So believe you me, in order for me to stay up and not fall down, because the enemy is always going to attack. That's his job to kill, to kill, steal, and destroy our joy, our purpose, to block us. And so knowing this, I have to stay fueled up because I'm living for God. I'm walking in God's light and God's favor. God's grace and mercy is following me all the days of my life. So I'm dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. There's no, no mistakes about that. So that's why I'm able to sit up here and encourage you because I know where God has brought me from. It has not been all um, peaches and creams in my life. Absolutely not. And it's still not. <laughs> Trust and believe it's not. We're always going to endure something, always. But it's how you go about getting out of the pit that matters. You're not trying to fall down and stay down and want somebody to come all over you and pick you up all the time and you drop it back down because you want somebody to be a part of your pity party. Don't nobody have time for that. Because trust and believe how people make their life look all rosy and good, it's not all good. If you're a human being breathing and, sh and, and, and blood's running through your vein today, you're going through something. You've been through something. It's how we overcome it. The steps we take to overcome it. And how strong you are in the faith. Faith. I speak about that all the time. Faith. You have to have faith the size of a mustard seed to get through this life. To get through the storm. I've been through a tsunami, a hurricane, a hailstorm. It's like when going through them hailstorms when them big old pellet of ice balls is coming at you. It's like it was being thrown at me. It wasn't coming down. It was going forceful, slapping me in my face. This is the storms that I, God brought me out of. So if he did it for them in the Holy Bible, who would be you, little of you, that he won't do it for you? He will. But you got to open your mouth. So instead of speaking negative, speak positive, speak life, choose life. 
It's like a team of a football field. I need my son to break this one down because although I sat there and I was a football mom, all I know is I'm going to cheer when they hit a touchdown, okay? And so you, you, you have everybody on the team that's responsible for playing a big role for blocking the opposing team from making a touchdown. So they're running from one field to the other. They're moving from left to right. And so you have the linemen, the defense, the quarterback. Everybody is playing a serious position on that field. And the whole purpose of the game is they want to win. And so that's, the, that's how we are when we're trooping for God. We're all on one team as a Christian family. And so when one person is falling down or we see one person is saying, we need prayer, I need prayer. Here we come running to come and pray for you. We're running because we got your back. We're holding you down. We are going to score for God. We're going to win for God. We got to have that spirit. So when I'm down, I wake up and I pray to God and I'm speaking life over myself. I don't want to wake up feeling dead. We can, you can. Your emotions will have you wake up feeling like just drained. You're just like the woe is me spirit is there. You're feeling like, I don't want to go to work today. I just want to cry. I want to pull the covers over my head. And I just want to sit in the dark. And I want to cry. No, God is not of darkness. He created night and day, yeah. But he's not of having a dark spirit. He don't want us walking around with a dark spirit. And so we got to pick ourselves up, enlighten yourself, encourage your yourself, speak over yourself so that you can be strong enough to do the same for somebody else. As I'm sitting here doing this for you, trust and believe once I get off doing this for you, I have to turn around and get my cup fell, filled, my spirit filled. And so I'm looking for, looking towards my pastor to do these things. And sometimes she's not able to be on. We're human. Things happen. So what happens when she's not there and my routine is off? I always have a backup. You always have a prayer warrior, a prayer intercessor. And sometimes you really don't need to, to ask anybody to do these things for you because you could do it for yourself. There's a relationship between you and your God. And so you have to learn how to tap into the power within because he's there. He's waiting for you to come to him. He's waiting for you to trust in him. He's waiting for you to, be, to help you build up your faith. Everything comes with time. We have to crawl before we can walk. How the world says it? Once an adult, twice a child. And we're always going to need our heavenly father. Because a lot of us, our parents have already transitioned on. That would be me. So whatever they taught me thus this far, I'm walking in it. And I thank God that my upbringing was what it is. It was great. It was good. What my mom instilled within me. Because it was always my mother. It was the words that she was doing. The work that she was doing. The prayers that she prayed over me. It was my mom's um, doing. Dad loved me. Dad gave me whatever I asked for. But mom physically, verbally mentally was there. And so some of us may say, well, Judith, what happens where I don't have, I didn't have my mom there. What happened when I, I was in and out of foster care? I get it. But guess what? If God sent somebody, we just don't realize it. He put somebody in place to be that mother figure for you. When my mom was battling cancer, stomach cancer, which took her in two months, within that short span of time, God aligned it where I was, I joined the church. I was in my um, studies of my membership class because you got to take, before you get the right hand of fellowship back then, you had to take these classes. And he aligned it where I met somebody who became my spiritual mom. And her spirit, her, her um, charisma, her smile, everything about her was my mom. It was exactly like my mother. And that is who my spiritual mom is today, Paulette. Before my mother even was diagnosed with stomach cancer, he put some other people that are moms to me in my life. Margaret Williams, Joyce Brown, my godmother. These are women 
that God already, he already seen what was going to happen. And that's the thing. He already knows when we're leaving this earth. We don't know. We don't know when, how, what, where it's going to take place. But we know that it's going to take place someday. And that's why every single day I'm encouraging you right now, this morning, to wake up with intent, positive intentions. You have to be intentional. Motivation. Motivation and determination goes a long way. Don't allow the negative to suddenly punch you in the gut. Who, who, everybody knows how it feels when somebody sucker punches you. And that's the enemy. He comes up on you and he sneaks you. And he's sneaking you. You be like caught off guard like, why he attacked me? It's like in true life, somebody jumped you and you're just going to the store. And somebody sucker punched you. That's a punk. That's a loser. Because they couldn't stand in front of you and fight a fear one. They couldn't face you and look you in the eye before they sucker punched you. Like how back in the days in Brooklyn, these, these gang members would have these initiations around Halloween time and tell these kids to go out and harm the elderly. They were attacking old people, y'all. And I tell you, Brooklyn was over the top disgusting. It was disgusting. That's why I got up out of here. And I'm not saying crime is every, it's not everywhere, but it's definitely terrible, terrible it, out there. And so it disgusts me at what initiation was about. And so that's the enemy using these kids. And so that's the enemy because he's a punk. He's a sucker. He can't face you because he sees what God is getting ready to bless you with before you even knew it. And if you're walking in your blessing, in your greatness, he's going to try to sucker punch you. He's going to punch you in your heart. And when he knocks the wind out of you, you go unconscious, your heart rhythm stop, your heartbeat stops, he throws the rhythm off, you're in, in cardiac, you're in distress right now, going into cardiac arrest because he done snuck sucker punch you, he snuck you. But we gotta build ourselves up spiritually so that when that punch come, throw that shield up and block him. Like, it ain't happening. You're not tearing me down. You're not knocking me off my ladder. And you have people that will speak. To you. I'm telling you, his advocates every day, all day. Every day, they're busy. Because they have a job to do too. Just like God is working on us and God has blessed us with a purpose. The enemy got his little pe his little imps. And he have them working on trying to work against us too. But you got to build yourself up. And how are you going to build yourself up? You're going to build yourself up by speaking life over yourself, not death. You're going to use your tongue first thing in the morning. You're going to use your tongue to be beneficial to you. Because it don't make sense that you are uplifting other people and you are down and you have a sour spirit. You have a dead mindset. You do not want to smell like death. You do not want to wake up feeling like death. You do not want to speak death. You want to speak life. I am joyful. I am prosperous. I am going to have a productive day. I am beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am perfect in God's way. I am perfect in God's eye. I am a child of God. I am a child of the King. You got to wake up speaking life. Not death. Choose life. Not death. And this is my encouragement for you today on this Friday. Get out there and seize the day. And yes, the enemy is going to be stumbling blocks. You might trip. You might fall. Get back up. Dust yourself off and keep it moving. Because as long as God woke you up today, and as long as when you fell, you didn't stay down, you still had eyesight, you still was able to see, smell, feel, taste, touch, you got to get back up and start again. Do not give up. Stay in it to win it. Just like on that football team, on that football, when the guys are in the locker, before they even come out, they're getting pep talk from their coach. While they're on that field and they, the coach see that they're not giving them, and he knows every player, and they see they're not, that that player is not giving his all, the coach is definitely going to start yelling. I used to say to my son, your coach is going to have an aneurysm. I used to sit there and pray over this man because he'll be so mad. He'll be trembling. You can see the veins popping out his, his side of his head, his temple. And I'm like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, please don't have this man have a heart attack on his field or have a stroke because he's really deep in the game. Like he takes the game seriously. The same way that this coach 
And I always pray the same way that he's so serious about coaching. I pray that he's serious about his godly life, his walking with God. Because seeing how he is, how determined he is for his boys to win that game, that's the determination that we have to have when we're walking in God's life. That's the determination that you must have for God, period. So God birthed within us to be a winner. We're walking in our winning season and we're going to do this and we're going to do it together. You're not alone. You are not going to worry, stress, fear over how the bills are going to get paid, what your spouse is doing to you. We're not going to live fester on the negative. What you're going to do is let go and let God pray about it and give it to God. It's easier said than done. But if I have done it, you can too. And I'm succeeding. And I've healed. And I'm still walking through it. And I'm still overcoming hurdles and obstacles. So if I can do it, so can you. And that's your word of encouragement on this Friday. Jesus loves you and so do I. You all have a blessed weekend. And we will chop it up again Tuesday, God's willing, because as y'all know, I'm burnt out by um, Friday, I mean by Monday, excuse me. So I wanted to love on you and you just never know. Maybe your sister can get on here and throw a little encouragement. It's what the Holy Spirit says I do. Not honestly what I'm saying is what the Holy Spirit says. But until then, have a blessed and highly fulfilled weekend, everybody. Love you.